Hey friends, welcome to Whiskey Whistle. I'm the host of the show, Mark, and you're watching Whiskey Tutorial, well, number one. But today we're gonna to be talking about how to taste whiskey. How do you taste whiskey? Let's find out how. This is, of course, the Whiskey Whistle tasting method. Now, we're gonna be tasting Glenmorangie, an older one. This is a 15-year-old Glenmorangie. I have yet to review this. Uh, it will be reviewed very soon. Very interesting whiskey. If you can find this one and if it's not too expensive, I would highly recommend uh, this Glenmorangie 15 year old. Okay. I found this here in Korea. Now if you're noticing that I've got a strange cork, that's because I do. I broke the, uh, the original cork, so I'm going to try to, um, well, extract the cork from this one and then put it into the, the, the wooden cork stopper of the Glenmorangie, so that way it looks the same. Maybe I'll do that before the review. Now, for tasting whiskey, we should probably use a nosing glass if you're looking to really explore the smells and the tastes of your whiskey. So here I've got a nice Glencairn glass. This one's from Winnipeg. Let's get that poured. Now you wanna pour, that's a, oof, whoops. <laughs> you wanna pour enough whiskey in the glass too. So probably 30 milliliters would be nice if you really wanna explore the whiskey. I've probably poured closer to 35 there, maybe even 40. I hope not. Now, uh, for the record, I think I paid 150,000 won for this bottle here in Korea. That's about 135 or so in American currency. And if you're looking at my little table here, you'll notice that I also have a Chivas Regal. In fact, a very special one, that is the Chivas Regal Mizunara, which is a Japanese exclusive. If you go to Japan, I don't care if you are a single malt lover, you need to get yourself either a small bottle like this, or a, perhaps even a full bottle. You will love it. I love this. This is really nice. We're going to pour a little bit of this one as well, a little bit more. Now, why am I pouring a little bit of blended Scotch whiskey alongside a single malt? Well, there's a good reason. Uh, the reason being, it kind of gives you a sort of a uh, starting point. So, this is a fairly down the middle kind of a uh, Scotch. A very nice one, but it provides that sort of a, um, uh, it's almost like, it's almost like smelling coffee when you're looking for perfume. You smell the coffee and then you, you, you know, smell different perfumes and when you, when you switch to a different perfume, you smell the coffee again. That way you kind of get your nose, uh, let's call it neutralized. So beautiful scent here, but it's pretty much right down the middle. So that really gives you a starting point of where to where to go, where is your nose going to go from there. Now tasting whiskey is not just about the taste, it's really an um, all-inclusive sensory experience. So we can start with the sight. Let's start with sight. What do we see? We can look at the color of the whiskey and here we're getting basically your standard golden color. Standard whiskey color and depending on the whiskey you are smelling and tasting, it'll be either darker or lighter. Some whiskeys use a little bit of added color and some don't. Obviously it's better, uh, is it better? It's better if they use either minimal amounts of added color or none at all. Um, I can respect that there are reasons, of course, to use a bit of color uh, for branding purposes, let's say. Of course, if you're marketing a single cask or a, um, a one-off kind of limited edition, shouldn't that be natural in color? I would hope so. And I think as 
whiskey drinkers worldwide are getting more and more educated about whiskey. I think you'll find that the percentage of all natural colored whiskeys is increasing. Does that mean you should avoid whiskeys if it doesn't say that it's natural in color? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, do not do that. You are going to be setting yourself up for, well, not being able to experience everything. And I really don't think that uh, you'll notice either in the smell or the taste, you will not notice that color except for a very select few, we'll call them uh, overly overly colored uh, whiskeys. Anyway, rant over. So, the next thing we're going to encounter after we look at the whiskey, oh, and then we should also mention the legs, right? Have a look at the legs. Roll the whiskey around in your nosing glass, in your Glen Cairn, or your brandy snifter, or your wine glass. All those are very useful. Have a look at what happens in the glass. And you can get a sense of the viscosity. Fairly slow legs on this one. Does that tell you anything of what you can expect uh, from the taste? No, but it's fun and it's interesting to, to, to try and to see. So then we're going to get on to the nosing. Nosing, that means to smell, smelling the whiskey. When you smell your whiskey, you may want to start a little bit far away and see if you can get a little bit of the bouquet from round about, let's say, 10, 20 centimeters away from your nose. When I do this with this Glenmorangie, I can smell some fruit, and that's really, really lovely. When I get closer, okay, so as you get closer to your nose, you may smell something a little bit different. <clears throat> And the higher the strength, the slower you should get closer to that, uh, the, the glass and uh, to the whiskey. Now, you should be able to be able to actually put your nose inside the glass. And opening your mouth seems to also promote a better sense of smell in your olfactory senses. Breathe it in. Breathe slowly. Don't go because you're probably going to get a, a little bit of an alcohol rush that might actually mm, be unpleasant. So take it nice and slow. Now you know what it kind of what it smells like. Now have a smell of your blended Scotch whiskey. You can also use another brand of single malt. Uh, that let's say is something like a space cider or your average kind of regular Highlander. I probably wouldn't go to an Isla unless you happen to be tasting or smelling another Isla. So that could be an interesting way to compare. The blends are much easier to smell. So I get the caramel, I get some uh, some nice certain space-side type of a content from uh, Chivas that seems to be where they are centered on is the space-side. And then I go back to the Glenmorangie and I'm getting more fruit. You know, and then try to think of what, what fruit does it smell like? And don't forget, when you are eating fruit or anything else, whether that's a roast beef or whether you're having some pastry, some bread, some licorice, don't just stick it in your mouth. Smell it first. Probably you'll want to do that where nobody's looking because I think people think it's really weird when you smell foods too much. <laughs> anyway, have a good whiff of what you're eating. Uh, how about your spice cabinet? Go through your spices. Give them a smell, all right? you might actually get an inkling of what the whiskey smells like based on what you've already smelled. So here I'm getting tropical fruits, I'm getting grapes, I'm getting all kinds of interesting fruit smells.
something kind of like clove also. Anyway, let your nose be the guide. All right, so now you're ready to taste your whiskey. When you're tasting whiskey for the first time, I don't care if it's 40% or 50%, you want to take about the smallest possible sip you can. And, well, here is my one and a half or 1.2 milliliter spoon. And uh, that's a really small amount. It barely covers my whole palate. So try to take the smallest amount possible. And if you're unsure, then you may even want to take a, a half teaspoon or a quarter. I would probably recommend a quarter teaspoon uh, measure, a measuring spoon, a quarter teaspoon. Okay. And go in there and you get your quarter teaspoon. Okay. Careful not to spill any. That's precious liquid, right? and pour it on your tongue. Should you swallow right away? No. The general rule of thumb is it's a 15 year old whiskey. Leave it in your mouth for about 15 seconds. Also, before you drink, I should have mentioned that at the beginning, before you drink, if it's a 15 year old whiskey, give it 15 minutes of breathing time, which I didn't do and I should have. But round about now, I'd say that we're getting close to about 15 minutes here. I should probably hurry up. Well, what, what do I do with this now? It's covered in whiskey. I guess we can kind of shake it off a little bit. <laughs> okay, so take a very small sip. Um, and if you've got a, a Glencairn glass like this one, try not to backwash. Uh, try to get the whiskey into your mouth without getting your saliva back into the glass. It will happen, but you can minimize it. Hmm. That was probably about 15 seconds. And if you noticed, kind of like mouthwash, I swished it around my mouth. Your tongue is covered with taste buds and they don't all act the same. So get it all around your mouth. Then finally you're ready to swallow. When you swallow, this is when you'll notice what is called the finish. You swallow the whiskey and you've got a certain flavor left in your mouth. That's what's called the finish or the aftertaste. This has a slightly waxy slightly peaty, a little bit, just a hint, of course fruity, and then the finish especially for this Glenmorangie is where I get the vanilla and a little bit of um, mm, caramel, even like a fudge, perhaps even a milk chocolatey sort of a flavor that's left in my mouth. So, Smell it, far away, get closer, get closer. Put your nose in the glass. Breathe it in a few times, very slowly. Take a small sip. Hold it in your mouth. 15 year old, 15 seconds. <laughs> Swallow it. Smack your lips. How does it feel? What flavors are left there? Hopefully that can be a good guide for you. Now we're not quite finished yet. I highly recommend adding a little bit of water for your second tasting in the same sitting, the same glass uh, of that whiskey. So for the Glenmorangie 15 year old, it's 43% ABV. I can safely add a good, whatever that is, quarter, I think it's about a fifth of a teaspoon actually. Fourth, it's a four, it's a quarter, yeah, it's a quarter teaspoon. All right, now, 
you want to get it mixed up a little bit. So we want to roll it around a little bit. You can agitate it somewhat. There are, uh, there are actual uh, scientific reports that say that agitation is a good way to, to get the smells to bounce out of that liquid. Now smell it again. Do you smell anything different? Does it smell different? Does it smell sweeter? Does it smell drier? This one in fact smells a little bit drier with water added. Is that good or is it bad? No, it's just different. A little bit spicier as well. Oh, but then, then there's a real deep sweetness coming through. And this is really like a salted caramel. A lot of people forget that Glenmorangie is a coastal distillery. So you can get some saltiness uh, from the whiskey. I even notice the peat a little bit more here now. Well then, go through the same process with the nose. Go through the same process again with the palate. Cheers. How does it taste? Does it taste any different? This is still very fruity, but it's starting to taste a little bit more like cooked fruits where you induce that sugar sac saccharification, I think it's called. There's a name for that. What's it called? I forget the name of it. It's a certain reaction that happens when um, the sugars start turning brown uh, in the pot, in the pan. Now, as you get climate acclimatized to the ABV, you can take a little bit of a larger sip. Only take as much as you feel comfortable. Only take as much as is uh, tasty for you. Don't take so much that it is sharp or painful from the, uh, the alcohol that's in the whiskey. Uh, I probably like a slightly larger mouthful than one of these. But probably even when I start tasting a new whiskey that I've never, never tasted before, I'm going to start with a very small amount. And if you're drinking something that's cask strength, uh, for me anyway, I will only ever take small sips until I add some water. Then I'll take a slightly larger sip of that, uh, that whiskey. Hmm. Even on the palate, a little bit drier, a little bit spicier, and yet still that nice deep sweetness coming through. I'm getting a little bit of a sense of a particular fruit now, and that is a fresh fig, not a dried one, a fresh fig. And I find that for the Glenmorangie range, the 18 year old, this one, and also signet, you get a little bit of this figginess, fresh figginess coming through. Now again, you got to, you're finished to think about. You've swallowed it. Smack your lips. How does it feel? Does it feel dry? Does it feel waxy? This one feels a little bit dry, a little bit waxy, still very sweet little bit of that spice coming through now as well. Mm. Very, very lovely whiskey, this one. Now, well, one thing I want to do before I uh, stop this, uh, uh, this tutorial is to give a special shout out to Scott Fulton. Scott Fulton, if you're watching, thanks very much for suggesting that I do this, uh, this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoy your whiskey journey. I know you're just starting out. I'd love to hear from you how you're getting on with that. 
So let me know. And for anyone watching, if you have any questions at all, or if you have your own special technique for tasting your whiskey, please do leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe right over here. And why not like this video? Share it with your whiskey buddies. I'd love to, for them to see and to comment on how they like to taste their whiskey. So stay tuned for more. <laughs> uh, thanks again to everyone who has subscribed and to all the new subscribers too. Take care now. Goodbye. Thanks for watching Whiskey Whistle. Be sure to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a like and leave a comment down below. Be sure to stay tuned next time to join me, the host of the show, Mark, as I explore more whiskeys with you. Take care now and we'll see you next time.